Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. So today, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be doing a travel Q&A, answering all of your guys' questions related to traveling. If, there's, if someone is new to my channel, I'm Rebecca Ellie. I've been traveling Australia for the past three years and I think I've been traveling for the past four years. Now I live in Australia. I create travel and lifestyle content here on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I know in the past, a lot of you have found my travel Q and A videos really helpful. So I'm hoping I can answer a few more of your guys' questions on here. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So my first question that I got that I also get quite a lot is what visa are you on at the moment? And I'm currently on a working holiday visa. So for those of you who don't know, a working holiday visa is the main type of visa people will get when they're coming out to Australia for a longer period of time. You can get up to three working holiday visas. In Australia, you do have to check your eligibility because there are only a certain list of countries that can actually get a working holiday visa. So you just gotta make sure to check that before. You can check on the official IMI government website. Um, it shows you, yeah, you can get up to three. Now with the new UK trade deal, um, people with British passports can get up to three years without even having to do any specified work or farm work, um, which is just amazing. I did my first year um, working holiday visa, which was affected by COVID. So I got another year for free because of that. And I also did my three months or my 88 days of farm work to get my second year. So that's three years in itself. And then I was also on the COVID visa for a year. Um, which was if you were here during COVID and you were working in a critical industry, you could get another 12 months on a visa for free. And yeah, I'm currently on my replacement working holiday visa for my first year. What's the next travel destination? This is a really good question. Like I'm not 100% sure, don't really have any trips booked. I definitely know that I wanna go back home to visit again next year, like back home to Sweden and England to visit. And on the way, I might wanna do like kind of what we did before and stop in Asia on the way out. Um, but yeah, there's so many countries still on my list. Like I really wanna go to Hawaii, Costa Rica, uh, Mexico really want to do more of Asia as well. Like I've been to Thailand and Bali and the Philippines, but I know I really, I have to do more of like the Philippines. I'd honestly go to Thailand and Bali again. And I want to do like uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, all of those countries as well that I didn't get to do last time I went. And yes, I do have a bunch of vlogs coming up from Thailand and the Philippines and our recent home trip that we did earlier this year. So stay tuned for that. They should be out soon, hopefully. <laughs> and the next question I got uh, is, what, what are things you would recommend sorting before a trip? So basically it depends what trip you're doing. But for example, if you're coming out to Australia on a working holiday visa, there are a couple of things that are easier if you sort before, like for example, obviously your visa, if you're not from an English speaking country and you wanna be driving in Australia, I do also recommend getting a translation of your driver's license. So like an international driver's license, basically. I do have one, I haven't been asked for it once, but always be on the safe side rather than sorry. I think it's a good thing to book at least your first couple of nights accommodation before landing somewhere, just so you don't have to stress about that um, when you get to a new place. Another thing I'd highly recommend sorting before you go traveling is an eSIM. So an eSIM, for those of you who don't know, is basically instead of those little physical SIM cards that you can get in each destination you go to, an eSIM is just like, you get a QR code sent to your email, you scan it, and it takes like one minute and you've installed it in your phone and you can have both of your SIM cards at the same time. So you still have your original SIM in your phone. So you don't end up like losing it or sometimes you need to verify your phone number. You can just quickly switch back to your original SIM. This video is actually sponsored by Olafly, which I am so, so excited about. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I recently did a video with them trying out their SIM here in Australia. I tried it out in Sydney and then also out in the bush and everything works absolutely perfectly. It's so smooth to set up. It's really quick and easy. They have 24 hour customer support. They have plans in over 165 different, different destinations. So wherever you're going, there's bound to be a plan that will suit you. Their plans range from five days all the way up to 90 days, which is really great. And it's unlimited data, which is amazing. You don't have to worry, you don't have to stress. 
you're able to set it up right before your travel so then as soon as you land in a new country you will be automatically connected to the strongest network provider which is great it's honestly a travel hack and now that i know about it i don't think i'll ever go back to buying a little sim card just because it's always such a faff to like walk around sometimes you spend like hours or days walking around trying to find a good like local sim card and there's also such a language barrier as well in some countries so that that makes it really hard too yeah, it's just a faff, but with Olafly you have your 24 hour customer support that can help you and it is really simple. All you're really doing is scanning a QR code. It's also good so that when you land in a new country, you don't have to go searching for Wi-Fi to be able to find out how to get to your hostel or how to get to your hotel. I always end up feeling like really lost when I'm landing in a new place, especially if maybe you don't speak the language or you don't quite know where you're going and you're by yourself as well, it can just give you that extra sense of security to know that you can always like Google around, find the best way to get to your accommodation, find the best price as well, because a lot of the time the taxis that are waiting for people at the airports, they will try and rip you off and they will try and charge like double. Whereas if, you, if you're instantly connected, you can just like check out the apps. There are a few different apps that are really good. Like for Asia, for example, we used Grab, which was like half the price of what the taxi was trying to charge us. So yeah, if you're looking at doing some traveling soon and you don't wanna go through the hassle of buying a SIM card when you get there or relying on like patchy Wi-Fi, then you can use my code for a 5% discount at checkout at Olafly and also have the link down below as well. Another question is how are the living cost food, etc., in Australia compared to Europe? And the living cost, I'd say it is a slightly more expensive. Um, than the UK and Sweden, but also there's a higher minimum wage out here, which is really good. So for example, when I was doing housekeeping, I would work on a Sunday and I'd get double pay. So I'd get almost like $40 an hour. And then on public holidays, you'd get sometimes three times your normal wage. And I think the minimum wage at the moment is $29, which is really, really good. And living costs are different depending on if you're living in a hostel, if you're living in a shared apartment, and where you're living as well. Some of the most expensive places to live are definitely like Sydney, Melbourne, Byron Bay. I honestly think Sydney is probably the most expensive place. A lot of my friends in Sydney were paying like 300 to $350 for just a room in an apartment, which is absolutely crazy per week as well. But then yeah, the pay is quite good as well. Like the minimum wage is really good. So you do end up like making more money, which is nice. Um, groceries and stuff are more expensive, definitely more expensive than back home. I was comparing everything now when I was at home and I was thinking that everything at home was really, really cheap. Uh, even though everyone back home is saying it's uh, gotten really expensive, but I feel like out here, everything in Australia is just a little bit more. So yeah, we usually budget that we spend around $150 on groceries a week, but that is really high. I don't actually think we end up spending that much a week. We probably spend more like $80 to $100 on groceries per week, if even that. I honestly don't even think it's that. Um, yeah, maybe like $50 to $100 on groceries per week each for me and Tommy, which is pretty good, and that lasts us a long time. So there are definitely like ways to cut your cut your cost. If you do want to go out for like drinks or food um, or even coffee, it is pretty pricey. But again, it depends where you are. Like as the further north you go pretty much, like up in Cairns, it's way cheaper. Some places like, for example, when we were living in Noosa, I think we were paying like 200 in rent each per week, 200 to 250. So yeah, it really, really varies depending on where you're at. But and how many people you're living with too. I will say that hostels have gone up in price a lot. Like at the moment, it's more expensive to live in a hostel usually than it is to like live in a room in an apartment. Like a hostel for a week could be four to 500, depending. But it's also, if you're coming to travel in Australia, it's worth it because you meet people, you have like the whole social part and it's also not super long-term. If something ends up being long-term and you, don't end up finding an apartment or a room. You can always ask if they do work for accommodation, which is what I did when I came out here. So that's a really good way to save money and also meet people too. Uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for a place to like volunteer in exchange for accommodation, you should definitely check out World Packers. I do have a code when you sign up with them. I think you pay like $50 for a year and then you have access to their whole like database of different 
They have like yoga retreats, surf retreats, hostels, lots of different types of places where you can work in exchange for accommodation. And some places you even get a little bit of pay and food as well, which is cool. Some places also offer like you can help with their social media and they have World Packers has places like all over the world as well. So even if you're not going to Australia, if you're going to like Asia or Costa Rica or Hawaii, they will definitely have something around there too. So I'll link that below as well. Another question is how do you decide where to go next? Honestly, I when I was, for example, when we were planning our trip, traveling the East Coast and then also traveling the West Coast and the Top End and also the South, pretty much for any travel we do, I always find my inspiration on social media. So on TikTok is a great place to find. I, I always search for like hidden gems in say like the Gold Coast or hidden gems in Sydney or like best day trips from Sydney um, when I was living in Sydney. And then another good way to go is to look on Instagram and search for the location and then look at places people are taking pictures of basically a lot of the times I'll put it in their caption, their description, I'll save a bunch and then I'll make a notes page of all of the ones that I really want to check out and then I will then go on the map and see what order I need to do them all in and make a big like Google document of what order we go to each place in. So for the west coast I would look up and I would see like which route we were taking and then wherever the closest one was I would put it up on the list and then if I want to be really organized for like really big trips so yeah like for the west coast I'd also write how many hours or like distance each place was away from each other so we knew kind of like where we needed to camp for the night and like things that you can do in one day so yeah that's also also like finding recommendations from locals and people that live in the area or people that have also traveled the area like you'll meet so many people when you're traveling as well that will also have recommendations of spots that they've been or spot that spots that they've been wanting to check out that they've heard from other people as well there's such like a good community when you're traveling like everyone is out to have new experiences and see as much as possible you will meet lots of people who will give you great tips as well so i have a question which is east coast recommendations i am actually thinking of putting together a little like travel australia guide like an ebook i've been thinking about this for the longest time um, but i wanted to ask you guys like what you would want to see in it like what questions would you want to get asked? Would you want like a separate, like maybe like an East Coast guide where I talk about like all my favorite spots on the East Coast, like when Tommy and I did van life and then do like a totally separate one for maybe like the West Coast as well. Yeah, just let me know like what questions you have, what you would enjoy me putting in there, like campsites, hostels, restaurants as well maybe, like what like out outdoorsy things to do tours that i recommend to do uh, let me know what you want to see in that but for east coast recommendations for now i'll definitely say like obviously the top three are for me great barrier reef um Whit sundays fraser island is pretty much everyone's top one and i will add in there like my personal favorites are probably noosa lived there for nine months absolutely love noosa it's just a small little coastal like surfy town there's a big national park you can spend hours walking around it the water is really clear there's lots of dolphins it's just like a magical place and then magnetic island as well is amazing this is probably the best place on the east coast for wildlife like it's definitely the best place to spot wild koalas it's got the largest wild koala population in the whole of australia which is amazing and it's such a small little just cute like paradise island great spot for snorkeling you can rent these little barbie cars so like open top cars and just drive around the island they have there's two different hostels on the island and both of them are absolutely stunning uh, when i was there both times i stayed at the selena i really really love the selena on magnetic island they do like breakfast with the koalas um, and daily bird feeding i'm pretty sure they do which is so 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 cool so i highly highly recommend magnetic island as well if you haven't already heard about that someone asked if we're still working for welcome to travel tommy's still working for welcome to travel that's part of the reason why we moved up to byron so he could be the byron tour guide basically which is really really cool so for those of you who don't know welcome to travel have started a new east coast tour where you travel from sydney all the way up to cairns and it's a semi-guided tour so you have a 
guide in Sydney and then a guide in Byron for a couple of days, which will be Tommy. And then you have this app where you have your whole trip planned um, with obviously some flexibility and stuff um, and a virtual guide through there. And your tour group pretty much just continues up all the coast all the way up to Cairns, which is really exciting and fun. And yeah, it looks like the best trip ever. Like I'm so jealous of everyone that's on the tour at the moment. You're with a big group of people. I think the max is 24. You go to all these places, you do like a scenic flight over the Great Barrier Reef in Airlie Beach, you go to the Whitehaven Beach. You have the option to go snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef. You do a surf lesson as well. And you go to Fraser Island, of course. And yeah, all of the highlights basically. And it is customizable as well. So there are certain things that you can add on um, or not also. So yeah, it's really good. If you do wanna book onto that, I do have a discount code, which can give you a hundred or $150 off. It's EC Rebecca Ellie. I have codes for all the different types of welcome to travel tours. Even if you didn't wanna do like the 30 day East Coast tour, there are also seven, there are also eight day tours in Melbourne and Sydney that you can look into. I'll have it like all linked below and all my codes below as well. And I have a whole separate video of me doing the Sydney tour a while back. If you wanted to see exactly what's on the Sydney tour, for example, you can check that video out. How to deal with homesickness-ness. <laughs> How to deal with homesickness-ness. That sounds really weird when I'm saying it. But yeah, this is a hard one. And I think especially in the first week or two, it's always, whenever you come to a new place, um, like whether that's like moving from hostel to hostel or from country to country or new place on the East Coast, there's always gonna take a couple of days for you to find your feet, um, find your people that you vibe with, people that you like, um, places that you enjoy going and just like finding your way around as well. It's always gonna take some time and I think, that feeling of being like a little bit uncomfortable, like not fully knowing the people that are around you and not knowing the place, that also makes you miss home a lot more. And I think you just gotta allow yourself to have those like however many weeks, like one to two weeks-ish of just feeling a bit like overwhelmed and like, why am I doing this? It's, it is gonna be scary, but in the end, once you get over that it is so rewarding and you feel so proud of yourself as well for being so brave and putting yourself out there. And for everyone, for example, that travels solo, I think, even just like getting on that flight and knowing that you're going to travel solo, even that is just like, that in itself is the scary part. Like when you get here, everyone is in the same boat. Everyone's gonna wanna meet people. You just gotta like put yourself out there and go speak to people, even though, even if it's uncomfortable, it's kind of just like, you gotta fake it till you make it and know that almost everyone is gonna feel homesick in the first couple of weeks as well. It's totally normal. It doesn't mean that you made the wrong decision and that you should go back home. It is just like a normal reaction of getting somewhere new, I think. Like I definitely always had that um, arriving in a new place. I think just like maybe FaceTime a friend from back home, call your parents or go and find someone. If you're in a hostel, go and find someone and just have a chat with them. Maybe open up about how you're feeling because that other person might feel the same way and knowing that you're not alone is also a little bit of comfort as well. Just like talk to someone and know that it will pass and everything is temporary. Here's a good question. Would you have wanted a four wheel drive or was the van perfect for your travels? This is like a really hard question to answer because I absolutely loved living in the van and the van gave us like so much comfort. We were in the van for I think six months and van life is the best. Like I, I would absolutely love to go back to van life and I think van life is the best way to go if you wanna live in your van long term. Like we were in the van for like six months so it was great that we had a van. But I think next time that we do it, we would really wanna go to some of those national parks um, that you kind of need a four wheel drive for. Like on the West Coast, there was Francois Perron National Park um, and also other places like inland, like the Gib, Gib River Road and a lot of places that we had to miss out 
because we just didn't want to put Susie through that. And we already put her through a lot, like going to Karajini National Park and driving on the uns unsealed roads. If you guys have been following us, our journey since then, you'll know that we were driving on the like worst roads and we were also like stuck on those roads for hours as well because a lot of the times we wouldn't properly check the map and we'd go the wrong way. So the cupboards were pretty much like falling apart in our van, Susie, as we call her. If you hear me saying Susie, I'm talking about my van. But yeah, I wouldn't trade it. Like I wouldn't trade it for a four wheel drive, but I think next time we do something, I really want to try the four wheel drive as like, because I think the four wheel drive is maybe not as comfortable to live in, but for weekend trips, and if you know you're only doing it for a short amount of time, um, I think I really want to experience the four wheel drive as well. So it is a really hard question to have. I will say that there were a few places that we did have to skip out in the Northern Territory especially and inland Western Australia. But it didn't mean that we, we still got to see pretty much everything that was on our list that we wanted to see. It was just a couple of national parks um, here and there that we just had to skip out on. But hard question because I really, really loved the comfort and the homey feeling of being in the van and I wouldn't trade it for anything but I would also love to do the lap around again and try it in a four wheel drive and then I can give you an answer because like like we don't know how it is because a four wheel drive you have a lot less space you're maybe like sleeping in a rooftop tent um, it's not as easy to free camp for example because you have that setting up every morning setting up every evening I just love the ease of living in the van you have your bed already set up you have your kitchen there everything's pretty much there you don't have to worry you can just get up drive and go in the morning i'll let you know whenever we get our four wheel drive it is the plan in the near like not near future but the next like big thing we want to buy is probably a four wheel drive another question which is better for you east or west coast oh, another hard question like i live on the east coast i absolutely love the east coast um but the West Coast has a special place in my heart. Like I think if I had the option to one day go back and live for a while on the West Coast, I 100% would. I think for the scenery and for the beaches, I definitely think the West Coast is my favorite. But then for diversity, I feel like the East Coast is great because we, you have like the rainforest, you have the mountains, you also have the beaches, whereas the West Coast is a lot more flat. There aren't like many mountains um, or like rainforests at all. It's kind of just like flat and desert, which is also really cool. Um, so yeah, it's hard to choose. I, I kind of feel like the West Coast for me at least because I'm such a beach girl. Like I love the beach. The beach is my like number one thing. If I have a day off, I just want to go to the beach. I want to go snorkeling. I love being in the ocean. So yeah, I might even say the West Coast, even though I'm living on the East Coast, but the East Coast is just closer to things. It's it's more livable. There's more people on the East Coast. I also love the East Coast. I love both, like I can't, I can't really choose, which is a boring answer. Another question is, do you have any plans to leave Australia soon? And the answer is no, I don't. Like I really want to end up being able to stay in Australia long term, like that is my goal. I know a lot of you guys have been asking like, what is your plan? When do you wanna, like, when do you wanna leave? Do you wanna stay? Like what's happening? And I've always been like, oh, I don't know, like taking it every day as it comes, which is kind of true. But like in reality, I, I would love to have the option to be able to stay long term. I'd love to like be able to get sponsored and get PR in the end. So that is our end goal. So fingers crossed, hopefully my girlfriend and I broke up whilst traveling and now I feel lost on what to do, any advice. I'm so sorry, like obviously I don't know what the circumstances are, but I would say I feel like you are in one of the best places to like get over a breakup because I can assume you'll be around a lot of people if you're traveling. I have a lot of cool like fun things to look forward to and be able to do. Me meeting a lot of new people as well, I feel like always helps to try and get your mind off things. Um, always when I go through a breakup, I just, I kind of don't like force yourself into being social and doing things every single day. I think maybe allow yourself a couple of days at least to just like be sad and just like 
feel what you're feeling pretty much and then after that I think it's really good to just surround yourself by people who make you happy um yeah go out meet new people maybe book like a little excursion for yourself like maybe go go on a snorkeling trip or I don't know do a skydive do something crazy to take your mind off it that will also make you feel a lot better about yourself as well because it gives you confidence doing all these new things so yeah, I'd say do that and also I really like this quote, nothing that is meant for you will pass by you. So just know that what happened was meant to be and if you guys are meant to be, you will end up being and if not, then in the future, you're gonna be really grateful that you broke up because it led you to this new person. Uh, that's how I like to look at it. There's always a silver lining in everything. Another person said that they just booked their flights to Sydney and what are some must-see spots? Obviously the Opera House. I really think you should go to Manly. It's a really nice day trip from Sydney. You can take the Manly Ferry. It takes like 20 minutes from Circular Quay over to Manly. It's a really nice place to snorkel on Shelley Beach, which is in Manly. Um, just a really cute little like beach town. It doesn't really feel like you're in the city. I'd also recommend the Bondi Takuji walk, which is probably one of the most famous walks around Sydney that you can do. Um, you can also take public transport up to Palm Beach if you're feeling adventurous. It is a little bit far. Probably recommend renting a car or if you have a friend that has a car, ask them to take you there because there's a really nice lighthouse walk and the beach in Palm Beach is really beautiful. Um, that was one of our favorite spots that we kept going back to when we were in Sydney. Um, also take a day trip or even a multiple day trip up to the Blue Mountains. It's really nice hikes, really nice views, some great waterfalls and stuff as well. You can get the train um, from Sydney up to Katoomba in the Blue Mountains and then there is a hostel there as well so you can like do an overnight trip as well which is cool or you could just go really early in the morning and then go back in the evening it is kind of like a full day thing just because it does take quite a while to get there or you can book yourself a tour someone asked what are your plans for the next couple of months so my plan since moving to byron is i'm working a lot less so that i have more time for my socials for uploading youtube videos getting all back into it i really want to start uploading once a week again um, like i used to do before even moving out to australia so i want to take it a little bit more seriously um, and yeah just focus on my socials building my socials connecting more with you guys creating more content i really want to do that get more into like photography again videography I want to surf lots, enjoy life really, like I feel like I have a really good work-life balance at the moment which is really really nice. Yeah I want to meet lots of new people in Byron as well so if you're in Byron hit me up. I don't know I'm excited, I want to work on some like bigger projects that I've been wanting to start working on for the longest time but just like never took the time to actually do it. Um, but yeah, got a lot of exciting things that I want to work on. Yeah, as I said, leave any like suggestions or questions that you want answered if I do end up creating an ebook, uh, if you'd even be interested in anything like that. Yeah, don't forget to check out all my links. I do have a Friends Down Under Facebook group as well that you can join if you're looking to go traveling and you want to meet like-minded people. Feel free to like make a post about yourself in the group as well. Um, and yeah, connect with each other on there. I feel like that's really cool that you guys have started like meeting people from that group. I just really warms my heart. Um, yeah, if you want more like live time updates from me, go ahead and follow my Instagram and TikTok. They'll be on the screen here. And yeah, don't forget to check out Olifly as well and use my code if you do end up getting an eSIM. It has honestly changed the way I travel and I'm never going back to getting a normal SIM card ever again. Because and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I love you.